Hi, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is iced tea. Harney and Sons Tower of London that I iced. And it's good. I actually like it iced either and, and hot. But I'm kind of at the time of year where I'm just, well, I'm always tired of the summer, but <laughs> where I'm looking forward to hot beverage weather when it's the kind of weather where it's relaxing to have a nice warm beverage and it is warming. But if you really want iced tea, it's not too cold, you know, in another word, autumn. But anyway, let's not whine because that's what I do. I whine about the weather all the time and let's talk about books instead. So I thought I'd do a combination of a Friday reads and a haul. I have a few hauls that I'm going to be doing probably over time again, but um, I thought I'd divide them a little bit. And however, this is a haul from last week when I was in the city. And this week is, I know you, people say I do overbuy when it comes to books. I do. I have too many books, etc. Even though I took books out of the library, as you may have seen if you watched my library haul recently. Um, this week, though, I have had the self-control to not purchase any new books. And I think that's good. So it may give me, although the library books will be a little bit of a contender, but it may give me a little bit of an opportunity to catch up slightly on the books that I've been buying. <laughs> so I'll show you what I've been reading and hope to be reading over the weekend. And then I'll show you the haul. So this first one is something that I've, I'm only up to page 53, which sounds weird because I've been reading it over weeks. Thing is that I picked this book as my, I call it like my commute book, like I keep it in my bag for when I go out. And my commutes are not that long, but um, I've had a thing where uh, sometimes, no matter what I do, because you could probably try to give me advice, but I've done all the things that people tell me with my glasses, etc. But I still get fogged up glasses pretty often when I wear a mask. And I know I could probably try wearing contacts, but then they're going to dry out and it's going to be irritating. So I have to sort of deal with being a little bit, maybe not wanting to read as much on the train, for instance, but occasionally it lets up. So I'll do some reading. So anyway, it just means I haven't gotten very far in the Cornish Coast Murder by John Bude. It's a British library crime classic, and it's, it's a good one to bring with me because it was already it already came to me a little bit beat up, so it's easy enough to just stow away and not worry. It's a nice enough story. It's, um, uh, there's a, um, a vicar who, uh, a, a neighbor nearby gets murdered and seems that he kind of helps out in the investigation. That's about what I'm up to at this point. It's just kind of procedural at the moment. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. <laughs> um... And the other mystery that I'm reading, I showed yes, was it yesterday that I filmed? Um, anyway, <laughs> the library hall uh, is a scandal, scandal, a scandal in Scarlet by Vicki Delaney, a Sherlock Holmes bookshop mystery. What I like about these kind of things, and I've I've heard this before, like cozy cozy mysteries they call them, is that you still have to follow along. You still have to be you know paying attention and being and you know be able to read decently to to be into this book, but I kind of like it that it is a little bit of an easy read, if that makes sense, because some, so many books that I'm reading and I enjoy it, but are a little challenging. Like you have to pay attention to things. You have to do a lot of, you know, concentrating and looking things up and whatever. So sometimes it's just nice to have a book that I could just sit and almost mindlessly, you know, enjoy. Everybody has books like that, but I'm, I've, I've become a bit of a snob over the years about certain genres of books and I don't want to be like that. But, um, I say that because it's not so much that I look down on people who read books that I'm not into right now. It's more of, there are so many books that I want to read that are kind of, I wouldn't say hard reads, but like they're not necessarily simple reads. And I, and I want to be able to use my free time to read those. So I don't always want to waste time as it were on books that are more simple reading, but I'm finding that I kind of need to balance that out. I need to waste time <laughs> a little bit and, and not look down on other people. I 
I mean, I'm, I try not to be a snob, but it comes through sometimes, and it's that's messed up because that's not. I don't really have a lot to be snobby about. We're all something, right? So now, speaking of, I really shouldn't be a snob. So this is a book that I've been reading mainly for the History Challenge, which I've only participated in in a very, very simple way. Uh, when I do a wrap up, I will show you the historical novel that I read because that could also be included in History Challenge. But this is one of the history books that I thought I'd read during this time. And I'd like to just devote more time to reading history. But so many I've been involved in so many read alongs and challenges that I that haven't included actual history so that I've not had as much time. So I took this book and said this will be the one and I'll read a chapter every day. And it turns out that this is not a quick mindless read. You have to pay attention. And I should know that, but this is Max Adams, Alfred's Britain, War and Peace in the Viking Age. So the first thing you have to get ready for is the names, especially like the Saxon, the Anglo-Saxon names. Uh, in the beginning, they give you a little bit of a pronunciation guide because certain letters are pronounced differently uh, than what we're used to. So you have to remember that. So it took me a while to get used to that. And there's a lot of footnotes and it relies a lot on archaeology, which is good. And it's interesting because there are places that are probably during this time that would be historically significant if they could dig it up. But a lot of places are buried, if they exist, under thriving cities and towns that can't be excavated. So I thought that was kind of, I, I never, well, I didn't always, but I, I f forgot really thinking about about being an archaeologist and trying to decipher, you know, because not everything is recorded in written records, you know. They had written records at this time, but not everything was preserved. So there's a lot to learn from artifacts and stuff, and if you can't get to it, yeah, that could be frustrating for them. So yes, this is not the quickest read for me, and then it kind of did take me down a peg, because then I realized that I am not this brilliantly intelligent scholarly reader uh and so really i shouldn't be knocking people for reading things that are what i would call you know easy i go to do the air quotes you know anyway so i don't think i'm the biggest snob i really don't um just, i just like i'm part snob if that makes sense <laughs> you know i'm you know part this and part that so this is uh another book that i'm going to be reading quite slowly not because it's necessarily hard to read I and mean, the translation's good but just because I'm doing it reading it with my sister and we're just both taking our time with this no pressure and that's the uh, Count of Monte Cristo which a lot of you have read and are very excited about that so I'm happy that I'm reading something that gets a lot of love from everybody I mean to me the size of it is about the Les Miserables uh, size which I did read many years ago but uh, so I'm not afraid of the size itself. I just, I just know that I couldn't read it within a month. All the more to look forward to, but man, I'm planning like these TBRs right now and I'm like, where am I going to fit everything in? Why am I stressing these things? Anyway, and this is, okay, this is just a side point. This is a magazine that I get sometimes in, I guess th somehow through my work, there was some kind of thing where you could get discounted subscription, subscriptions, yes, to different magazines for like really cheap. And of course not the absolute favorite magazines of mine but this is one that I think is pretty nice and don't mind it for the price it's really cheap um and I just saw this when it came in uh it's flower magazine so it's a house garden lifestyle which I don't have much of a house or a garden but you know but I do like the books in the background you know look at me I'm like I'm like a uh, how many dimensions you know it's like putting a mirror in front of a mirror but it has a tea with India Hicks who I don't know who that is but it says tea so this can be kind of, I don't really like this pattern very much. I'm sure somebody does, so good for them. Anyway, but this could be a fun, fun read, hopefully. Quick, very quick. Um, so then I also, here's the haul part. So if you were tuning in just to watch a Friday Reads, see ya. <laughs> no, please stay. Um, this, the, um, I have a coaster and the iced tea just keeps sticking to it. So it's like, what is, what is this weight? Oh. Sorry, I want to like go it down for some reason. This is always a problem of mine with cold drinks that I get like suddenly I want to drink really fast. Either I'll start choking on it and I'll sound like I'm, you know, in trouble or um, 
in the case of anything alcoholic, that is very dangerous. But this is just caffeine. When I say just. But anyway, so here's what I got. I um, There's a number of ways for me to go to the office, which I'm doing approximately once a week. And I have, yes, there's a number of ways to get into my office. There's a number of subway train stations that come from different angles, so I could choose one of those if I happen to take the train. There's also a bus a couple blocks from where I live that takes one into Manhattan, in Midtown Manhattan. <clears throat> and it's still like a almost, I guess, 15 minute walk to my office. It depends on how fast I walk, you know. And uh, so if I take that, I have to give it a little time. And um, it's a good thing, you know, sometimes it's nice to just take your time, leave a little earlier. Um, they've been running pretty well. And funny thing is, and this is something I took into consideration, was that until the end of this month, uh, the buses have been free. Uh, so I thought that was good, you know, so and, and give me exercise. So I, I leave a little early, I take the bus, take a nice walk, because the weather was pretty decent that day. And, you know, it's a very, very good deal for me. But um, it was better. It was better on the way because on the way back, it ended up uh, going into it. The people coming out were fighting. So that was already kind of scary because <laughs> nowadays you just don't know. And also coming in, there was somebody who was not wearing a mask and somebody that I think nobody wants to confront about it. So I had to kind of get away because he's actually trying to talk to me, <laughs> like not in a mean way. He was just trying to make conversation and I kind of made some kind of little excuse that I, oh, I meant to sit on this side because I wanted to take a picture of something, which I ended up taking a good picture. <laughs> these, are the, these are the things that we have to go through in life right now. This is the fun, the fun uh, adventures, but <sighs> I survived. But anyway, and, uh, and I have my mask on, so, you know. Um, okay, so <laughs> once, I, once I get past that story, um, but on the way, which was a very safe and an easy, well distance commute. Um, I pass by Argosy bookstore, they call it. Yes, bookstore, not bookshop, I don't think. And yeah, which I've mentioned numbers of times on this channel it is this little, little, like when I say little, it's like six floors, I think, but it's kind of just narrow looking and you know, all these, all these modern buildings and then this other store that is just books all like used sometimes rare they have maps all these beautiful things and i had looked at my clock and i thought it wasn't going to be open yet but it was so i was like i'm gonna look so all i did really i didn't go in the entire store i looked just in the the the, the outside has shelves that are um well today they had well it's not today it's over a week ago over a week ago they had um some art books for about three dollars but None of them looked like anything I'd be into. And then they had books outside that were e either novels or nonfiction for $3. And then inside, there were a couple of uh, little uh, ro rolling shelves for of $3 books. Used, they used to have $1 books, but you know what? Some things just... whatever. And... Um, and yeah, I was so happy to be there. I, I'd seen I'd seen the bookshop on on that documentary, The Booksellers, I think it's called, which I if you can get a hold of it, I, I think it's on Prime now or something, but maybe for like rental. It was it was it used to be like an independent film thing that you had to watch. It was in the theater in late winter, and then you know it theaters closed, <clears throat> and it's really just about. Um, booksellers like especially antiquarian booksellers and stuff and in New York and I love it <laughs> but they interviewed people that I never heard of but they went to this store and they had three sisters that work there their father had owned the place I think originally they were in um there was like a street I think it's called like booksellers row or something that um where the Strand the famous Strand bookstore also used to be it was just fourth avenue in uh, downtown Manhattan and um now there's, I think, maybe one bookstore left. I think it's called Alabaster. That's a used bookstore. It's pretty nice. But um, but then they moved, I guess, at some point to Midtown. And their father had um, run the place. And I think they, I think and I hope that they own the building, which would make sense. But um, but so these three sisters were interviewed. They still work there. They still, you know, they all do something different. 
And um, as someone who comes from three sisters, I kind of sometimes wish that I <laughs> that I could work in that kind of situation. That would be awesome, but it's not never gonna happen. But um, we can dream. But yeah, it was, and it was I think one of the sisters that rang. Yes, it was that rang me up, and I was all chit chatting behind my mask, blah blah blah, because I was so excited. I was like, I saw you in the documentary. <laughs> anyway, after that, all was said and done. I bought these four books, and this one is Ex Libris, Anne Fetiman, Confessions of a Common Reader. First of all, isn't this just so cute? Isn't this just adorable? I know I shouldn't buy things because they're adorable, but I think I read this book a long time ago. When I say a long time ago, this came out in 1998. So anytime since 1998, probably, probably around somewhere between 2001 and 2004, somewhere there, um, I think. But I didn't have a copy, I don't think, because, you know, I've been surprised before, but I did want to reread this because I love reading books about books. And, bonus, someone had written to someone named Sylvia in here. So, dear Sylvia, I could spend hours looking at and talking about your library. Thanks for opening me up to new poetry and revisiting some of my old favorites. Hope you will enjoy this book about libraries and reading. Fondly, Ken... December 17th, 2005. So now I want to know what happened to Sylvia and if she's okay. 2005 now is like 15 years ago, so... I told, I told you guys, I think, maybe I'll, I'll mention it again, that sometimes I have books like... Um, oh, I can't reach it. I have one book that had a, you know, it, an ex Libris, you know, like a, the, um, the sticker inside that had someone's name and I looked it up and I found their obituary few years back so a lot of times when I buy used books that's what happens they're they're um people who died which is kind of sad but again it's not, uh, if something were to happen to me I would like to know that my books found homes anyway so the next one I found I know you guys have been hearing about me and my British Library crime classic uh obsession lately but um it, you just saw one of the books I'm reading and this one I saw and I'm like I don't have this one Sergeant Clough Stands Firm by Gil North. So let's, um, let's see. Amy Snowden in middle age has long since settled into a lonely life in the Yorkshire town of Gunnershaw until, to her neighbor's surprise, she suddenly marries a much younger man. Months later, of course, Amy is found dead, apparently by her own hand, and her husband Wright has disappeared. Sergeant Caleb Clough, silent, watchful, a man at home in the bleak moorland landscape of Gunnershaw must find the truth about the couple's unlikely marriage and solve the riddle of Amy's death. This novel, originally published in 1960, is the first in the series of Sergeant Clough detective stories that were televised in the 1960s, but have long been neglected. This new edition is published in the centenary year of the author's birth. So he was born in 1916. Like one of my grandparents. So anyway, that sounds like it could be good, and it is part one of... Who knows? Maybe I'll get into a new series. Or not. So, I feel like yet another mystery, but, um, so this is also a mystery, and, uh, of course the picture was what got me started on this. Canaletto! And the case of the Westminster... Jeez, you think I could say this word? Westminster Bridge by Janet Lawrence. So, uh, wait, this is, uh, this is our Janet Lawrence here. Um, St. Martin's Press. This is about a, a, a painter. Uh, London in 1746. And the Italian painter Canaletto. 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 See, I have to do it like that. I'm half Italian. Um, <laughs> half Italian and, <laughs> and half snob. Arrives to paint the new Westminster Bridge, eager to rediscover the fame and fortune he once enjoyed in Venice. What happened to him? Um, he finds danger, dogs his footsteps, he's rescued, etc. He's a target for robbery. Um, let's see, um, William Pitt, William Pitt, uh, com comes in, into the story. I've heard of him. So it's a bit of a mystery, a bit of a, you know, what's going to happen kind of situation. London, painters, up my alley. Last but not least, and I thought I'd mention it now because I'm thinking about Scotland a lot. This is The Great Scott by Duncan A. Bruce. A novel of Robert the Bruce, Scotland's legendary warrior king, which I know very little about. Um, 
which I want to learn more about. Not that I need to know everything about Scotland, but you know, again, I am part Scottish and part snob <laughs> and part not snob. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know about like Braveheart a little bit, William Wallace and that stuff. But I think I know more about the side from England. And what I say, I've been thinking about Scotland a lot is because, well, today I would have been in Scotland. It was, I think, three years since I arrived in Scotland. I had my first haggis. And, I mean, it was my second trip to Scotland. I had been to Scotland when I was, when I was like, a teenager. And both times were in August. And I don't know what it is, but I honestly think that Scotland in August is where I should be. If I could choose where to be in August every year of my life, it would be Scotland. I know it's impossible. But because both times I went there, everybody was complaining about the sweater weather. Oh, I gotta wear a sweater. I gotta wear a jacket. It's cold. And I was like, this is beautiful. It's perfect. Because I was in London before that. And I went back after. But, and it was a little hot. And, I mean, it wasn't terribly hot. But, you know, they don't have really great air conditioning facilities there. So when they get a heat wave, it could be a little rough. So, um, and I don't like heats. I don't like being hot or cold. But something about Scotland, it was just perfectly, for me, perfectly temperate. Yes, it did rain a little bit on one day that I was not in the mood for, but that's, it rains here a lot too. So anyway, so yes, I think August, like I know April is, tar they have Tartan Week and whatever, so April is supposedly like the, the month that people think of Scotland. For me, it's August. So when I saw this, I kind of said to myself, well, there you go, I'm probably not going to read it in August. Sorry, I feel like doing a little workout. I really don't, I'm just being weird. Um, I'm also part weird. So now you know my family tree a little better. Um, so it's just about how, so when I say that, it's kind of funny because I point out the name Duncan Bruce. He is a descendant of Sir Edward Bruce, uh, brother of Robert the Bruce. So he is a great, 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 whatever, nephew. Um, and he's from Pittsburgh. And a lot of great people come from Pittsburgh. Um, and he's written about Scottish things. It says he is married with two grown children and lives with his wife Tamara in New York City. I looked it up and he has died since this book was written. This book was written in 2004. So yeah, since then he has died. Wait, these both are, these are both St. Martin's Press, these books. What do you know? Anyway, so those are the four books that I got in Argosy and they gave me three, um, bookmarks that's the word i love bookmarks so much it has a quote from the quotable virginia wolf which i shall not read to you secondhand books are wild books homeless books they have come together in vast flocks of variegated feather and have a charm which the domesticated volumes of the library lack besides in this random miscellaneous company we may rub against some complete stranger who will with luck turn into the best friend we have in the world you know what? She's so quotable. But anyway, I, if you guys somehow find your way back to New York, um, yes, I, I always, I mean, I always talk about Book Off, but Book Off they have in other places too. Um, but, and The Strand, there's so many bookshops I can recommend, but definitely if you happen to be in East Midtown, go visit Argosy because you will at least if you like old bookshops you would enjoy that so that's my Friday reads and my haul for today let me know if you've read any of these books let me know what you think if you like talking about these books please subscribe and I hope you have a wonderful weekend this is Catherine at Taking Tea with Catherine and have a lovely book and tea and hopefully not too much iced tea filled day goodbye